Once we're outside, we scan the horizon, trying to orientate ourselves towards the volcano. I mean, you just head towards the big gray mountain. I mean, that's the general direction you need to go. Excuse me. Whoa, who are you? I whirl around to come face to face with a woman wearing just enough fabric to cover her essentials and nothing more. Ah, I think that's a little bit more than what you're describing there, buddy. I mean, it's not much, but at the same time, it's a little more than what you're describing. Her long brown hair is tied up in a ponytail which falls down on her neck and uh, frames her very ample chest. Can we get a P button? Please? The plot thickens. Ugh, <laughs> oh, the plot does thicken. She embodies my dreams. Just like every uh, scantily clad video game character. My eyes are drawn towards her chest. Ah, yes. This is <laughs> this feels very familiar. Distracted by something? Oh shit, she caught us. Fuck. Abort mission, folks! I snap out of my trance and notice her grinning. Her hands are on her hips. Uh, what? I feel the heat of someone's gaze. I glance over to see Leanna frowning deeply. When her gaze meets, she quickly looks away. Whoa. Whoa. Who are you? Jiggle physics. Holy shit. Zack steps in front of Amelia, who frowns and steps away. I guess he's taking his bodyguard business really seriously. Liana hold Liana holds herself stiffly, ready to move if necessary. The woman salutes. Car noir, treasure hunter extraordinaire. I like her. And not just for the plot. Okay, it's a lot for the plot, I won't lie. Zack narrows his eyes. What do you want with us? Well, I couldn't help but overhear that you're interested in the fire temple. So you were just listening in on our conversation. How did you hear us when we were inside? She taps her nose knowingly. I have very sensitive hearing. I fail to understand how our interests are of relevance to you. She wants treasure. Temple has treasure. We're going in temple. We can handle ourselves. Profit. Right? That's how that works? I was just getting to that. Oh man, that belly button. You see, I've come to offer an extension of friendship. Define friendship. Both Leanna and Zach raise an eyebrow. Or at least an extension of mutual benefit. That's more appropriate. Okay. It's true that the villagers maintain the fire temple, but from what I've discovered, they are unaware of the temple's secret passage. Yes, just a secret passage in the temple, as I say it out loud so everyone can hear it. If you're interested in the energy of the temple, I can guarantee that's where you'll find it. If the villagers don't know about the secret passage, how did you find it? Plot. It's all a part of the treasure hunting gig. You have to be looking for it to find it. So, plot. Carl winks and gives us a thumbs up. The best part is that I've already disarmed or made a note of most of the traps in there. Keyword there, most. There are traps in this temple? Have you never played a Zelda game? The temples are a sanctuary for the elementals, but any place that is easily accessible is sure to attract all types. There are measures set in place to protect the spirit from those who wish to harm it. Like I said, I've disarmed most of the traps, but not all. There is one magical barrier at the end of the tunnel which I've not yet been able to pass. Okay. I don't have magic, but you do. She gestures at Liana and Amelia. If you can magic that barrier away, then that's at least one step closer to finding your energy. <laughs> Just magic the barrier away. It's like, and now that you've told us of this entrance and where it's at, why do we have any need of you? Zack so crosses his arms and glares at Kara. How does that benefit you? She grins. All I'm interested in are the artifacts and relics. From the sounds of it, you guys are more interested in something else. Hence, mutually beneficial. I mean, if there's magical weapons and shit in there, um, uh, I want some of them. So, what do you think? 
I look at the rest of my group. Wordlessly, we huddle closer together and whisper. I don't trust her. But I also really don't care. Because of plot reasons. Who cares if she's joining or not? She's not interested in the elemental or the energy. She wants to if she doesn't want to go with us, then she can just go after we've broken the barrier. Hmm. You do have a point. Whoa. I must concede that I am impressed by her resourcefulness. It is plainly evident that she is not a native to Ember Mist, which means she somehow discerned the location on her own. That's a really good point. Kinda looks thoughtful. As a treasure hunter, her tracking skills could come in handy in the future. Mm-hmm. We all stare at Zack. He shrugs. Do what you want. That sounds like a yes to me. Zack doesn't respond. He just fixes his daily gaze on me. So does this mean we're agreed to join up with Kara? We all nod. Why? The Pongo sits in the middle of our circle and blinks happily. Why did you even go when you were hiding? Boy, boy. Let's go tell Kara. It's st I still I just imagine every time it just says boy boy, it's just saying fuck you, just little middle finger, fuck you. I do what I want. Uh, note to Future Wolf: uh, put put a replay of that that scene that just happened. We turn around to see Kara standing right behind Liana, her face only an inch away. Liana lets out a startled gasp. Jeez, what is she? Some kind of... Uh, uh, it hurts. Kara rubs her hands excitedly. Alright! This will be fun! It almost feels like the voice is processed a little bit too much. It almost it has like this ever so slight tinge to it. It almost feels like it's not robotic, but it feels like it's been processed heavily. I mean, not that I'm one to talk. It's not like I have a fucking perfect voice or anything. Wait, we didn't give you our answer yet. What? She could hear us from inside. She could hear us talking about her, and she heard that we said yes. Are you shitting me? Oh, sorry. She steps back and gestures for Liana to uh, continue. Liana speaks awkwardly. I guess she feels a little silly saying that uh, Kara somehow already knows. Um, well, we decided to take you up on your offer. Kara nods. Excellent. Since we're going to be working together, first things first. You all know my name, but I don't know yours. I'm Liana. Mage Knight from the Guild? I am Amelia Estelle, a mage caster from the Mage Academy. Kara blinks. A mage caster? You look like just a teenager. Amelia cocks her head to the side. It is natural that my physical appearance will represent my age. She looks at Amelia with respect. That is pretty impressive. Who's next? She looks at Zack. Zack. She chuckles. Very clearly a mercenary. And I'm Southern Wolf. Her green eyes study me, and although she's very clearly examined me, I don't feel uncomfortable under her stare. Now that that's out of the way... Boy boy! Kara steps back and views the pongo at my feet. You have a pongo! How cute! She reaches down and pats him on the head. He beams at her touch. And what's your name? Boy! She glances at the rest of us, but none of us make her a move to answer. Oh, is he not a part of your group? He is. Sort of. And you haven't named him yet? Leanna and I shuffle uncomfortably. Zach remains unchanged while Amelia frowns. A pongo is a wild creature. Kara straightens and pats Amelia on the head, much to her dismay. If you say so. Okay. Are we ready to get going? We murmur our ascent, and then Kara leads the way out of the city. As we walk, another ominous rumble sends butterflies in my stomach. I can't shake the feeling that we are literally walking into a fire. I would suggest rephrasing that, uh, slightly. It feels like there's something there, uh, 
rephrasing is probably a good idea. I don't know what should be put there, but it feels like something else should be phrased there. I glanced at the others who seemed unfazed. I guess it's just me. Pushing my insecurities down, I silently followed the group towards the temple. Just as Elder Ism noted, the temple is a short walk out of the village uh, on a well-worn dirt path. The road is mostly empty, and only one or two travelers coming back towards the village. The temple is an open structure with a roaring fire in the middle of the Grand Hall. Now that's pretty badass. That looks like they put a lot of de- holy shit, the detail! Oh my god! I'm sorry, I gotta look at this. This is, this is nice. Holy shit, the detail. That is a nice CG. High columns with flames carved into them hold up the building. Adorning the stone walls are beautiful tiled mosaics. There's one wall with some strange symbols uh, scratched into them. They're very faded, and I have to squint to make them out. From what I can make out, four symbols surround a darkness in the square with the line of the fire enclosing the perimeter, trapping the darkness in the center. Huh, I wonder what this is. Amelia glances over and then peers at the carving. Those symbols represent each of the magical elements. She points to each one. There is fire, water, earth, and wind. She points to the center. And that is shadow. I never considered shadow an element before. It is one of the elemental magics. Karazak and Liana have already moved on, so the rest of us hustle to catch up. Besides us, the only other people in the temple are the monks who care for it. They're dressed in woven red robes, in the same open and loose style as the village of Embermist. Quietly, they shuffle back and forth, sweeping the floor, or relighting any of the smaller fires, which burn low. Bye. The Pongo looks around in wonder and reverence. At the sight of the giant flames, he squeaks and hops up on me, claiming his spot on my shoulder. Kara bows briefly before the large flame and then leads us into the back of the chamber and stops in front of an empty wall. We're here! Of course we are. Zack sighs. Huh, secret passage? Kara might be a little out there. But I don't get the impression that she's stupid. There must be more to the wall than what meets the eye. Is there a mechanism hidden somewhere which triggers the doorway? Car's eyes glitter. Bingo! Wow, that was a really quick hand moment. That kind of freaked me out. Whoa. With her gaze fixed on us, Car pushes a brick on the segment of the wall and pushes it and swings open. She waves at the opening with a flourish. How did you know which brick to push in? It usually depends, but in this case, there's one brick that sticks out slightly more than the others. If you aren't looking for it, you won't see it. I would like to roll perception to see if there's any secret passageways. She heads through the opening and pushes the wall closed behind us. Then she leads us down a winding stone stairway which ends at the beginning of a narrow passage. We file behind her as she carefully picks her way down the hall. It's a very plain hallway with uh, walls sconces lighting the way. I look down at my feet and notice the brick with an X marked on it. Shit. Okay. I was about to say, I have a feeling this X didn't make it onto the stone by itself. I better not touch it. Gingerly, I step around the brick. A few feet away, I spot another X. Is anyone else seeing these random Xs? Car glances back. I should hope so. I left those there so as not to set off the same traps again. So that means you set them off before. Makes sense. We resume walking. The deeper we travel, the more X's I notice. Wow, there's a lot of traps in here. Zack pauses in front of the corridor which, uh, where the walls are covered in X's. Why are there so many X's on this wall? Carl looks down at the same passageway. Oh, it's a two-part trap. She points it to a stone on the ground with the same X marking. Basically, if you step on the ground stone, it triggers thick, 
bars to shoot out from all the X's in the wall and block the path. That doesn't sound too bad. Only if you know how to limbo. The bars have something keeping them hot and will burn you if you touch it. Okay, that sounds worse. And you were able to cross that? Kara winks. I am very limber. Oh, go on. Zack looks at Kara with interest. Amelia looks between Zack and Kara. Based on the dilation of Zack's pupils, it appears that Kara's flexibility is attractive to him. It's attractive to me. Zack is taken aback. I was just thinking that it's a useful skill set to have. Kara has a mischievous glint in her eye. Useful skill set to have? In what context? Zack frowns. For scouting and navigating. You've done a thorough job mapping this place out and marking the traps. Leanna looks amused. Zack, was that a compliment? God, he's being so sundere right now. He glares at Liana. No, an observation. Kara smiles playfully. Then thank you for the observation. Zack falls silence before turning away. I think that's the most I've ever heard him talk in that 30 second span. I remember that from the little preview that they had. It's done well. We continue through the tunnel. Eventually, she stops in front of another well of fire in the middle of the hall. The barrier is here. She gestures at the swirling metallic uh, wall behind the well. Uh, the way that it glitters and it whists and curls almost like a fire. Lena and Amelia step closer and inch their hands in front of them before gingerly touching the barrier. It's surprisingly solid for something that looks so gaseous. Maybe there's some wind magic interwoven with whatever other magic is here. The Hongo pops forward with stars in his eyes. Boy. It's like magic. He dashes straight for the barrier. The Hongo, wait! I stretch out my arm and race after him. Pongo, no! Instead of running into the wall, the Pongo passes straight through it and out the other side. Why, cruel world? Pongo! I land heavily against the barrier. Did he make it to the other side? Or was he burned alive by this weird magic twisty flame-like thing? My legs grow weak at the thought and I slide down the barrier. No! I bang the obstruction. Give him back! Give back my Pongo! Boy? Blue head pops out of the barrier. What? He pops the rest of the way out. Boy, boy! Then leaps into my arms. I thought I was never gonna see you again. What was it like on the other side? Boy! He bounces up and down in my arms. Amelia places both of her hands back on the barrier while Liana holds uh, out her manipulator. Whatever is beyond this wall hosts a plethora of energy. Liana nods. My manipulator confirms that. No wonder the Pongo ran in there. Zack continues to hang back and observe, but Kara steps closer to the barrier. But how did he even pass through? Liana shrugs. Amelia continues to study the wall, moving her hands up and down. I do not recognize this magic. She frowns, deeply disturbed. Is there anything you can do to break it? Let's see. Liana and Amelia both put their hands on the magic barrier, their manipulators growing, glowing. They each transmit pulses of magic which disperse across the surface in a shimmering wave. I think they're trying to create a stress fracture to crack the wall. After a few tries, Liana sighs in frustration and then steps back. Amelia, stand back. She wordlessly obeys. Lena gathers her energy in her gauntlet and strikes the barrier with an empowered strike. Suddenly, golden letters form above the barrier. Absolve your world to enter mine. What does that mean? No one answers. Amelia steps forward and focuses on the well of flickering flame. If I am interpreting this message correctly, we must part with our most precious possession, our world, and throw it in the fire. Wait, you mean we gotta throw the pongo in the fire? 
Shit! Lana nods thoughtfully. Kind of like we're freeing ourselves. Kara's face drains of color as she clutches her pack. Are you sure? Yes. We stand around awkwardly until Liana clears her throat. If that's what we need to do, then it seems easy enough. I'll go first. Yeah, go ahead. I nod as Liana steps up to the fire. She reaches a below her collar and slips the, a thin golden chain over her neck and throws it into the flames. Taking a deep breath, she steps straight through the barrier. It worked! I'll go next. I step up to the fire. What do I choose? My waifu! <laughs> oh, my waifu. What happens? Unfortunately, I don't have a waifu at this time. Okay. Well, the most important thing... I mean, where's our cell phone? Our cell phone's in there. That's pretty important. But the most important thing is Pongo! I look around, my gaze lands on the Pongo. That last scare really wrecked me. I can't help but I've grown so fond of this little guy. I snatch up the Pongo who squeals. Boy, boy. I love you, little buddy. Boy. He wiggles out of my grasp and, and races back through the barrier. No! Wow, I'm not thrilled to have to throw in my most precious items either, but even I wouldn't go so far as to sacrifice the Pongo. It's not a sacrifice. You just try to throw a living creature in the fire. That's probably not the best idea I've had. I fish in my pocket and grab my wallet. My entire identity is here. My license, ID, credit cards... The thought of parting with it makes my chest hurt. Reluctantly, I toss it into the fire and watch the flames lap it up. Then I steal my resolve and step forward. Whoa, whoops. I double clicked. I'm sorry, guys. There's a bright light blinding my vision, and I have a flashback of my crossing to Terra. My foot lands on solid ground, passing through the barrier unharmed. Gradually, my eyes adjust to the dim light, and I see a cozy room. Whoa. I'm sorry, one second. Nice. Nice, very nice. In the middle of the room is a fox who swishes its tail and observes me. Beside is a beautiful woman with flaming red hair. Her delicate hand rests atop the fox's head. I look her over, her gaze lands on me. Who are you? Uh-oh. I mean, that... That look, uh... It's kind of intense. To be continued! Holy crap, folks. That is the end. Almost five hours later. This is one hell of a demo. Damn. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. That's a hefty demo. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all so very much for watching. And as I said at the beginning of the series... And in every single one of my videos, check out the link in the description below to check out their Kickstarter. Um, right now, it's $15 American uh, to get this uh, pre-ordered for yourself. And as always, if you like the video itself, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you all next time.